All right. So, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Brand Consulting's Excel and Power BI webinar series. This is the November 2018 edition. We do this every third Thursday of the month, though we are kind of late this time around. But we have three webinars going on today. This is the first one, Excel and Power BI webinar series, which is going to run from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., one hour. Then from 11 to 12, we will be having our financial modeling webinar. So if you are someone that is interested in financial modeling or you build models, so I think you should be able to join that one. They will also have another L&D webinar, which runs from 1 to 2 p.m. So today we have a very interesting topic to discuss today, which is five cool AI features in Excel and Power BI. So AI is something that is currently trending right now. Everywhere you go, go online, every every time it's all about AI, 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 AI here and there. So many balls around AI at the moment. So we are going to be looking at five cool AI features that we have within Excel and Power BI. So I'm your host for today. I'm Ahmed Oyelowo. I'm a business intelligence analyst and trainer at D Brand Consulting. I'm a Power BI, Power Query, and Excel lover. I love those products a lot. And I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer and a Microsoft certified solution associate. So today, we are going to be looking at what is AI, two cool AI features in Excel, then three cool AI features in Power BI. Then we'll also be looking at some of the new features that Power BI released for the November edition. So every month, Power BI, they ship in new updates. So we'll be looking at some of the top new features that will ship out this November after. All right. So basically, we would like to understand what AI is all about and uh, I'm going to be playing a short video for you to see before we now discuss about what AI is really about. Okay, all right. So that video was actually no, about uh, a robot that was programmed by Boston Dynamics. So AI simply means artificial intelligence, which is actually giving computers the ability to think like human beings. So computers are going to think like human beings. They are going to be doing some of the things that we humans can do, and probably they will even do it much faster and much more efficiently than we currently do. So we are all heard of about uh, the self-driving cars. That's one example of an AI. So self-driving cars, those cars are going to be driven without human intervention and they can actually hit the road and do everything that a human being would do on the road. You avoid potholes, avoid obstructions, avoid uh, things that you need to avoid just like a normal human being would do. So AI is actually a field of computer science. So when the scientists discover that we human beings, we need to be able to be much more productive. So they were able to, to develop computers and computers were actually helping us a lot to be much productive and do much more than we could achieve normally as ordinary human beings. And then they also now discover that, okay, computers are helping us a lot, but then we still have a lot of human intervention for us to be able to use those computers. So they came about discovering something else now, which we now know as artificial intelligence. So now computers are going to be able to think by themselves like human beings, although they also have to learn first. So they are going to learn how humans think first or how we do a lot of things. For example, the self-driving car is going to learn how a human being drives a car before it can now drive by itself. So that is what AI is all about. But before it can do all of those things, it has to be able to learn from a real human being. So in as much as AI has a lot of benefits that it can offer, there are also some concerns about AI. For example, uh, there's a theory by Elon Musk called the Singularity Theory, which Elon Musk thinks that 
at some point we are going to be developing ai that are going to be much more intelligent than human beings and at that point take for example if a a, a robot is meant to perform a task for example and it is much more efficient that than a human can do and it thinks for example that human beings are the obstructions to what is meant to achieve and on most things those robots are going to destroy human another uh, actually scary example is when the facebook actually programmed two robots and uh, they asked those two robots to interact with one another and do some transactions with simple english right so they actually started out with simple english but ended up developing their own language which no human understood what they were saying so facebook had to shut that down so that it doesn't cause some catastrophic or some unforeseen circumstances so in as much as ai can help us a lot there are a lot of concerns that is all about but that is for a separate discussion right so today we are actually looking at some of the the cool ai features that we have within excel and power bi so we'll be looking at two features in excel and another three features inside power bi So the very first feature is pixels in Excel. So pixels is an AI feature that we have inside Excel. And this actually reminds me of my banking time where tellers at that time used to do a lot of reconciliations. At the end of the day, they have to balance out their account. And if for adventure, a teller is unable to balance out the account. You see, we always see a lot of people gathering around that teller and trying to do what we usually call call over. So call over is a process whereby someone is looking at the physical uh, vouchers that a teller has received and the other person is actually looking at the screen to call out all the figures of all those transactions. So someone is calling out transaction amounts and another person is cross-checking manually to see that those transactions correspond to what was posted into the banking system. So speak sales is something that can actually help us do that. So you don't actually need to have a second person calling out to you, something you can do by yourself. So Excel is going to help you out in calling out all those transactions or anything you ask it to call out while you can go ahead and look at your physical document. So I'm going to share my screen now let me know when you see what I'm sharing. So speak cells is actually within Excel, but for you to be able to call out speak cells, you have to go to the quick access toolbar. So to get to quick access toolbar, I'm going to click on, I'm going to have to click, go to my options, Excel options, file, click on file, then go to, Just use a short from my bar, then go to hands or commands. I will scroll down and look. Add to add to my quick access to bar so adding the other one cell. I'm going to click OK, stop speak cells access to my Excel. Transaction. So transaction amounts, I'm going to generate some random numbers. Random numbers from, let me say, 100,000 to 
hundred thousand. To use speak sales now, all I highlight. I like the I want Excel to start calling out for me. Then I'll go to my quick access toolbar and click on this speak sales. And Excel is actually going to start to call out everything I've highlighted. So I can use my physical box check without needing any other person's help. Two hundred and five thousand nine hundred and seventeen point zero zero. Ahmed. One hundred and fifty eight thousand eight hundred and ninety nine point zero zero. Godstein. One hundred and seventy thousand five hundred and eighty nine point zero zero. Okay. All right. So that is pixels in Excel and. Uh, is something that actually can save a lot of time and even much more accurate than human beings because sometimes if you have to be reading out those figures yourself it's actually very possible for you to see the wrong thing depending on what your mood is so the second ai feature we are going to be discussing is forecasting in excel so there is a new tool in Excel that is called the forecasting tool, which can actually look at what your historical numbers are and help you to project forward by using some machine learning algorithms. So I'm going to be sharing my screen again to do a demo of this forecasting within Excel. So you can see my screen now. So this is a data set that has to do with monthly revenue from uh, October 2014 all the way to March 2016. We are going to use the forecast tool in Excel to see how Excel can actually help us to forecast these figures forward based on what this historical that we currently have here is. To use the forecast tool, you have to highlight the whole area of the data you want to forecast. Then you go inside your data tab. So you go inside your data tab. If you get to the data tab, you are going to see towards the right, you see a button for forecast sheets, right? So if I click on that button for forecast sheets, you can see it already has a chart for me that has forecasted these values forward from October 2014 to August 2016. So the blue lines in this chart area represent the actual figures, and then the orange line represents the forecast figures. So you can see two lines that forecast which represents the lower confidence bound and the higher confidence bound of which what are the possibilities of what the forecast should be going forward but we have a lot more uh, functionality that we can use within this this for, uh, forecast tool so if i click inside these options i can change where the forecast ends maybe i don't want it to end in august 2016 i want it to end maybe like uh, august 2017 and also, it's also very good for me to change the forecast start period. So instead of the forecast to kind of like start at where my data ends, where my actual data ends, I could take this back a little bit backwards. So I can actually have a sense of how the forecast is working. Say, for example, if I take the forecast back from March 2016, and I'm telling you to actually start from March 2015, so it's going to give me a sense of how the forecast is working. Is it really giving me values that are close to what my actual is? So now I've changed it to March 2015. And uh, you can see the forecast is now starting from March 2015. And it's actually a little bit accurate. So if you see, say, like July 2015, what I have as my actual figures and what the forecast is predicting, is actually very close and the difference between the actual forecast and the lower confidence bound and higher confidence bound is not that much. So that's just to say the forecast tool is doing 
a very good job and the accuracy is not that bad. So I also have the option to change the kind of charts that I want to see here. So currently it's displaying as a line chart. I can decide to show it as a column chart instead. So if I show it as a column chart, it's gonna look like this. But I think it is much more better if you use a line chart to display a time period data set. So once you are done with all your settings like this, you just click on this create and it's going to create a separate sheet for us for the data that we are forecasting and also create a chart. So if you look at this, you will see that the original data just has month and revenue. So just month and revenue in the original data set and it has created an additional column for the forecast revenue. Remember the forecast is starting from March 2015 rather than where the data ends at March 2016. Then the two other columns also created are the lower confidence bound and the upper confidence bound. So without having to know any uh, AI knowledge or say machine learning, algorithm knowledge or any complex mathematics, you can actually use the AI features within Excel to achieve some more productive work. So that is our second AI feature within Excel. So we're now going to move into the features within Power BI. So we're going to move on to the features within Power BI, but can you just chat in the comment box what do you think about this forecast tool in Excel? What do you think about the forecast tool in Excel? You can chat in the chat area. So we have now covered the two features that we've highlighted for Excel. That is number one is the speak cells in Excel. Number two is the forecasting in Excel. So our number three AI feature is analyze feature in Power BI. So the analyze feature in Power BI is something that helps us to look at our data and try to make sense of it. So normally you have a data set that makes no meaning originally. And then by the time you create some analysis with it and you create some charts, then that is going to give you much more meaning. But even at that, we still need to get more insight from that chart. So I'm going to share my screen again for you to see this data set that I have. And I'm going to try to use the analyze feature in Power BI to see what insight I can get from that data set. Okay, so you have a data set that is looking like this. You have a data set that looks like this and it absolutely makes no sense in the original form. And uh, you have to create some kind of analysis with this and probably put up some charts before you can make any meaning with this data set. So I'm going to go now into Power BI and try to take this data set to Power BI and create a quick chart to make more sense from the data. Okay. So I'm now going to connect to this data set within Power BI. Get data, connect to Excel. Then I'll grab this historical sales data 1.5 years, bring it into Power BI. So I'm connecting to this fact sales, but I'm just going to edit this, edit in Power Query to make sure all my columns are properly set into the right data set.
So everything is in Power Query. Uh, my region market store, they are fine. Period is a date, physical period. I'm going to have to change physical period from a date to a text. Physical period is a text, replace current. Then I have my revenue as decimal number, not whole number. I'm going to change this to decimal number. And my unit sold is fine the way it is. Then I'll just come to this properties area and I'll change this from fact sales to I'll just call it um uh, just call it sales data. And I'll close and apply. So close and apply, and I'll quickly pull up a quick chart of revenue by month. So when I create a chart, I'll create a column chart of revenue by month. I want revenue by month. So this is revenue by month, and this actually makes much more sense than the original data set that we have. So we can see how our performance has been by month. And if you now look at this, you will discover that revenue has been doing well from between January up to June, doing very well. But all of, all of a sudden in July, it drops to a certain much more lower levels. So you might want to know why this drop was really causing this drop. Why do we have revenue dropping by a huge amount like this? So for you to be able to do that, there is a feature in Power BI that is going to go into your data set and try to see why has this drop happened since for this. For you to get that, I'm going to right click on this month of July. If I right click on July, then you see an analyze option. So within this analyze option, because there's a decrease between June and July, it's going to show me, explain the decrease. But had it been, I'm trying to analyze from a decrease position to an increase position, then I will see explain the increase. So I'll just select this explain the decrease. And Power BI is running an analysis to see why we have this decrease. Can you see it's actually bringing out the percentage of decrease. So here is the analysis of the 50% decrease in revenue. And you can see it says service plan accounted for the majority of the decrease. So Power BI has gone into my data set and has actually created like a month on month difference between all my line of business. And it has seen that service plan is the one accounting for the major difference. So there are slight differences between Pass, printer sale, and copier sale, but service plan is accounting for the major difference. So this is insights that you couldn't have seen ordinarily. But with this AI feature in Power BI, it makes it easier for us to do much more and gain more insights. So there are actually much more uh, insights from this as to the we have drop. So even looking at our stores, it says this uh, Jaokota had the largest decrease among store. So we can now see the stores that are pulling up, pulling down the revenue figures between the month of June and July. It's also looking at the market. You see the performances based on all the fields that you have your data. And can uh, if you need to see any of this chart within yours, all you have to, to click on the little we have at the top, add to page. So if I click on this add to page, it's going to add that to my Power BI chart. So I can now see the we have this decrease between June and July. I have another chart that is explaining that to the right and the service plan is the major reason why we have that drop. So 
that is the analyze feature so that is our number three feature number three ai feature in excel and power bi so we're going to move on to the next feature which is the natural language query in power bi so without having any knowledge of how to write formulas or how to create chart how to create reports you can actually ask power bi some questions about your data set and it's going to return for you the answers that you need so i'm going to share my screen again i'll go to power bi and this time around i'll be sharing on a blank power bi screen so let me know when you can see this screen as well So the natural language query is giving you the opportunity for is giving us the opportunity to type in questions about our data for example you might actually want to know maybe which store is giving you the highest revenue or what is the revenue amount for a particular time period and you don't need to write any formulas whatsoever all you need to do is type in there in simple english language and Power BI is going to return a result as a chart. So can you see my Power BI screen? I've opened a blank uh, canvas within Power BI. Let me know if you can see this. So I want to show how you can use Power BI to ask questions about your data without writing any formulas whatsoever. So anyone can actually use Power BI with this uh, natural language query feature. All you have to do is bring in your data and ask anything you like about your data set. So I've shared a blank canvas within Power BI and uh, I want to see if I can get results. I can get results from my data set without writing any formulas at all. So if you look to the top of the Power BI, if you look at this my ribbon command in power bi you you are going to see on the home tab you see ask ask a question so you can ask a question from the data set that you have right another way to quickly ask the question is just to double click on an empty area within a blank canvas or on any canvas and you will see this pop up ask a question about your data okay so for example let me see I'll tell my data to show me, show me revenue by month. As it show me revenue by month, RBI is going to create a chart for me and show me revenue. Let me do that again. Show me revenue. Show me revenue by month, and Power BI is going to create this quick chart for me. So now I can see what my revenue is by month without having to write any formulas at all. That is a super, super cool feature. So anyone can get to use Power BI. So I can also chat in, send in another request to Power BI and say, for example, what is the revenue amount for north let me say north central what is the revenue amount for north central in say in april 2015 what is the revenue amount for north spree 2015 and probably i already gives me my results right so what if for example uh i don't know that what i have in my field is revenue so i may want to say for example what is what is the sales amount what is the sales amount and as you can see once i type in what is the sales amount power bi doesn't really understand what this is saying simply because i don't have any field within my data set that is called 
sales amounts, but that can be corrected. All I need to do is to teach Power BI that anywhere you see revenue, it is also called sales amount. So for me to teach Power BI to do that, I will simply go to my relationship view in Power BI. If I go to my relationship view in Power BI, I will select this table, which is my original table. Then I go to the modeling tab and you will see this button for synonyms. So if I select this revenue field and I click on these synonyms, click on synonyms. So if you look to the right of the screen, you are going to see that I have uh, another pane called the synonyms pane. So I'll simply go to the revenue area and click inside that box and type sales amount. So Power BI now knows that if I'm asking a question using sales amount, it simply means the same thing as revenue. So if I now go back into my report view and I try to ask that question again, what is the sales amount? You can see it's already giving me figures. So what is the sales amount for uh, North Central? So what is the sales amount for North Central? It's going to give me a result. So sometimes AI needs to learn from human beings. So this is just an example of how you need to train your AI for it to be able to give you, deliver the kind of results that you want. So simply because we don't have any field called revenue. So if you ask it to tell you the sales amount, it's not going to understand that. So you have to go in there and tell Power BI that revenue is also synonymous to sales amount. So anytime you ask a question on sales amount, it should understand that you are actually also talking about revenue. So that is another super cool feature super cool AI feature in Power BI. And that is our number four feature. And we now go to the final one. So that is all about the natural language query in Power BI. I'm going to move on to the final one because of time. So the final, final one is narrative science in Power BI. So Narrative Science uh, is actually a company and they try to develop a lot of AI tools that is actually going to change the future of how we work. So this is, is one tool they created as a custom visual in Power BI that is called the Narrative Visual. So I'm going to have to import Narrative Visual into my Power BI and try to see how that really helps us to analyze our data. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. So Power BI naturally has about 29 standard visuals. So anytime you open a Power BI desktop, you have just these 29 visuals always there, but you have the ability to bring in some custom visuals. And one of the most powerful custom visuals actually is one developed by Native Science called native for business intelligence. So we are going to import that custom visual now. So for you to bring in a new custom visual, you just simply come to the bottom of your visualizations pane where you have all those standard visuals. So the last one there is the ArcGIS map. Then you are going to see these three ellipses. So if you just click on that three ellipses, it says import a custom visual. So I'm going to try to import from marketplace. So click on import from marketplace and uh, wait for Power BI to connect me. So we have a lot of custom visuals here that we can add to the standard ones and they do quite a lot of more interesting visualizations to tell better stories with your data. So I'll just simply type in the search area or type narrative narrative and click search so i'll see narratives for business intelligence this is the visual that won the microsoft uh, applicate best application app for 2017 so i'm going to click the add click add to bring in that visual to my power bi 
So now I have it in Power BI and I can actually make use of this now. So let's see what this does for us. So I'm gonna bring in this visual. I'm trying to create a report by, for dimensions, I would say, bring in my dates. So bring in my date and I want you to display this by month. So display this by month and then I'll bring in revenue as my values. Then you are going to have to click whether the kind of report you are creating is discrete or continuous. For example, in this uh, circumstance, I'm going to be using the continuous option, not discrete, because the report I have in this visual, in this my report page is actually a continuous kind of report, not discrete. So I'll click on this right narrative, and Power BI has actually already written a story for me based on this report. So anyone, even those that don't understand anything about reporting or data visualization can actually see clearly what this report is all about. So it's actually writing a story and saying the average revenue was this, 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 and you can format this chart to look much better. So if I come to this formatting area, I'll go to narrative and tell it that the structure should not be paragraph. I want the structure to appear as a bullet list. So when it appears as a bullet list, it is much more readable. So something else, you also have control over what this is saying. For example, if you see what is written in the first narrative, it says average revenue was 6.09 billion across all 12 periods. So you have the power to change the language. For example, we know that periods here simply means months. So I'll simply come to this settings icon area within the visual. Then under the first option, which is language, I'll go to month. So month is currently showing as period. So I'm going to change that from period. I'll call it month. And the plural is going to be months. The plural is going to be months. So now my narrative is going to be much more clearer. So rather than show average revenue was 6.09 billion across all 12 periods, I've now changed it to show average revenue across all 12 months. Then some other things you can actually do with this is to probably go to, let's say you go to uh, characterizations under revenue, you might want to say revenue is money. So it's going to show in dollars, I guess. So if I say money, so it's going to be showing me in dollars. Dollars is the default that it has. Then you can actually go to, um, let me say analytics or display. So if I go to display, I could say good change, uh, good changes should show as green, then let bad changes show as red. So it makes it easy for anyone looking at this report to quickly spotlight on important areas. Where do we do good and where did we perform badly? So let me know what you think about this narrative visual in Power BI. It helps a lot to explain whatever you have inside your report page. And that is the last feature that we are going to be showing today. So I'll just quickly do a recap of all the features that we have looked at. So the first one will look at speak cells in Excel and how that can help you to quickly do reconciliations without needing to have a third party. The second one is forecasting in Excel that is using the forecasting tool within Excel to forecast figures forward based on historical numbers. Then we look at the analyze feature in Power BI, which is very helpful when you are trying to analyze the reasons why you have certain increase or certain decrease inside your data. 
Then we also look at natural language queries in Power BI, which helps you to ask questions from your data without having any knowledge of writing formulas or whatsoever within Power BI. Anyone can actually use this. And the final one we look at is the narrative science in Power BI by looking at the narratives for business intelligent custom visual, which won the, uh, the Microsoft application, best Microsoft app for 2017. And that enables you to write a story about your data without you typing in anything whatsoever. So it simply brings out insights that even you are unable to see naturally. So now we want to see our top new features in Power BI for November. The first one is that you can now copy and paste between Power BI files, which was previously unavailable. And the second one is you can now expand and collapse metrics row headers. So let me see if I can show how to do that. Expand and collapse metrics row, metrics row headers in Power BI. I'll just quickly see if you can quickly show that. Expand and collapse metrics row headers in Power BI. So I'm sharing my screen again. Okay. So let's say, for example, if I'm creating uh, a report using the metrics table visual. I'll just do that on this new page. So I'm creating a report of, let me say, uh, I want to see region, and I want to see also markets. So both of them should be on rows. Then I want to see that by unit sold. So how many units were sold? So originally, if you look at this, you will see that I have two things on my rows. I have region and market on rows. And what I'm currently seeing at the moment is just the region. So if I need to see, I need to be able to expand and collapse this North Central, for example. So it enables me to see what are the figures for all the markets within the North Central. So originally, all you have to do before is to come and drill down on all the levels by clicking on this last option, expand all levels down. So this is what's going to enable you to see everything at once, but this doesn't give you your normal view and go to the formatting area. Go to here and uh, on row headers, I think. So under row headers, you this plus minus icons. So if I put that on, it's currently off. So once I put it on, plus minus icons, you see it show on the visual and from the normal view of the metrics visual, without having to drill down all levels in the hierarchy, I can now just click on this plus sign here to expand and I'll see the values for the market in North Central. I can collapse these and do that anytime I want to make it easier for you to do interact with your reports. That's an excellent feature. And that brings us to the end of this showcase. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ahmed, for the webinar. And everybody, thank you for joining us at Deep Brown Consulting for another of our monthly webinars on Excel and Power BI. So this was hosted by Ahmed Oyelowo, who is also a business intelligence analyst at Deep Brown Consulting. If you want to join us for all the webinars for the next webinar, since you've registered for this one, you're automatically going to get a notification for the next one. Just remember, it is the third Thursday of every month and third Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Nigerian time, which is West African time. And we also have a financial modeling webinar from 11 a.m. to 12 noon and a training and talent development webinar at from 2 p.m. 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So also you could join us on Office Training Hub, which is our e-learning platform, and you get some free courses and quite a lot of other interesting courses on officetraininghub.com. You have an offer which you're seeing on your screen already. You could just click on that offer and go at least watch the free videos of that training. And if you're interested, you could then buy the course, which is Report Automation in Modern Excel. 
So thank you very much, Ahmed, for hosting. And that was excellent. The features really look cool. And hopefully more and more of you start using Power BI, which is an excellent business intelligence tool. Thank you, Ahmed. And thank you, everybody. That's the end of our webinar for this month. If you're interested in financial modeling, hang on in the next one hour and join us in the next one hour. Or if you're interested in talent development, join us in a couple of hours for the talent development webinar. Thank you, everybody. And bye-bye. This is the end of the webinar. We'll see you next month.